Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here, and guess what today's video is about? That's right, it's gonna be about the end disk again because I've just finished burning my um, off-site archive of the M disk. I did, look at this beauty. This is a uh, binder full of M disks starting from my first video, my first, uh, first folder full of stock video footage, B-roll, Wedding photos are in here somewhere. Um, it's about 18 discs and believe it or not, this actually constitutes pretty much everything you're seeing on this YouTube channel plus some more. Uh, not all my YouTube videos are public so there's some ones where I'm just like testing out microphones. I put everything on MDisc and that was firstly a massive labor of love. Then I did another labor of love because I realized three, two, one backup, you gotta have an offsite. So I've been duplicating this guy one by one and I just finished earlier today. So I've been having a lot of fun with my verbatim M discs. Um, but what I wanted to do in this video is I put together a presentation or a slide, whatever you want to call it. I want to talk about why I'm genuinely so excited about M discs. I probably don't need to say that my enthusiasm comes from a genuine place of excitement. And I know it seems a bit weird for non-data protection backup folks to be so excited, but I've genuinely been looking for something like the M disc. For the longest time I assumed it didn't exist. I never heard of the MDisc until about two weeks ago and um, I'm so happy to find it because it's a great relief for me to have that feeling of having my stuff backed up on uh, some kind of media that I can control, I can see it's in my house, it's going to be in my relative's house and it's there's there's no maintenance. It's supposedly, and again I'm going to get into the claims about the MDisc, it's supposed to just sit there for 100 to 1000 years no bit rush to worry about. And it's the only kind of media that actually promises that. So I think it's fascinating. I actually think it's amazing tech. Now I get there's a lot of skeptics, especially on Reddit where people are like, well, if it says it's 100 to 1000 years, how can you know that? Because it's only been on the market since 2009. So I definitely hear that argument. I did speak to the inventor of the MDisc, Barry Lunt last week. I just trust it. Um, this is a technology I, I, I trust. You know, I trust that it's a unique tech. It's patented. It's a unique engraving process. And realistically, when you're doing something like three to one backup, you know, you have two copies as well as your original data. Um, it's probably data I'm not gonna need again. It's archival of these videos. It probably never will be anywhere but YouTube, but I still want to protect it and have it my own copy for uh, here on after, the next generation, whatever you wanna say. So let, let me get into it. Let me jump into it here. So this is called why um, MDiscs are amazing tech. I was gonna say in my opinion, but I said I'd be a bit a, a bit more brash because I think this is just really a cool invention. Irrespective of whether the use case is really small, I still think it's easy to be hypercritical and let's just say this is a cool tech. So um, I'm gonna put myself over here a little bit. As it says on this slideshow, feel free to use this slide or this video however you want. All my YouTube videos, uh, unless, they, unless it doesn't have it in the description, are licensed under CC by NCND 4.0. Creative Commons license, simple language. You can share it, distribute it. Just make sure you say it was by me. Uh, I do want credit for my MDisc fervor. And uh, that's a quick URL if you ever want to jump to this YouTube channel, danielrosal.com slash YouTube will redirect over to this YouTube. So let's get into it. So what's an MDisc you may ask? That's a good question. So what these things are, basically it's a modified version of the DVD and Blu-ray that's specially engineered for archival uh, offline storage. So when we talk about data storage and, and archiving, there is uh, typically two ways it can be done. And uh, one of those is storing it on a live system, on a server, let's say. Uh, the cloud falls into that category. The cloud, as the famous saying goes, is just somebody else's computer. So you're just storing it on a server, let's say you have it in Glacier, it's up in Amazon's cloud. Now there's a theory that, uh, that uh, AWS Glacier is actually tape. Uh, no one seems to actually know that for sure, but irrespective, it's in uh, someone's cloud storage connected to computers and the internet. Cold storage by contrast is uh, also known as sitting on a shelf, right? So it's literally just taking your uh, finished archived M disks and putting them ideally somewhere, you know, humidity, humidity, temperature controlled, but basically not in a computer, right? So what makes M-Discs unique? 
So it's actually in, and it's a pity I should have included probably the diagram, but it's in my other MDisc videos. And if you do want to watch my interview with Barry Lund, if you're really interested in MDiscs, he explains all this in detail. So basically the unique thing about MDiscs is that usually when you're writing to optical storage, CD, DVDs, and Blu-ray, to the best of my knowledge, and I wouldn't, wouldn't yet consider myself a optical expert, I'm just an MDisc fanatic, um, the laser ablates uh, away at a dye. And the problem is that over time that dye will uh, degrade, the dye will fade. So if you think about the bits and bytes of data being stored as millions of tiny ablations onto that dye, if the dye itself fades, we're going to lose that optical contrast that is storing the data. So when the laser passes over the disk, uh, that's how it reads. It goes up to a, it's actually pretty fascinating, a reflector, and that gets fed into the computer. So uh, that's how it usually works. And MDisc took a different approach. This guy, Barry Lunt, went on a hike. I, I love this story. It's, this is, to me, partially why I love MDisc. It's such a great origin story. He went on a hike. He noticed what are called petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are little pictures carved into stone. And he noticed that these ancient carvings were just this uh, deep in stone, not very far, but that had made them much more weatherproof than painting on stone. So this guy is a storage, a storage expert, computer scientist, and he was like, aha, why don't we try to make a form of optical storage using the same principle? So that's what the N-Disc is. In between the exterior and the bottom, somewhere in the middle, again, you need an electron microscope to be able to see all this stuff, but somewhere in the middle between the top and the underside of the disc, um, there is a trade secreted inorganic layer. And when you're writing an MDisc, and this is why writing an MDisc takes such a bloody long time, you're not actually ablating dye, you're actually engraving into this uh, trade secret layer. Now, unfortunately, the uh, company that um, originated this technology, Millenniat, has gone bust. So it's verbatim who are continuing the technology. Uh, but in any event, so it is a trade secret and it's patent protected. And look, People will say, oh, but you know, the fact that this can be read on regular Blu-rays, it can't be that secret. I don't buy that. Um, you know, I think someone should probably try to reverse engineer the MDisc if they really want to prove that it's not that unique. I suspect it's a really good technology. And yeah, we're not probably not going to know for another century uh, if we can still read them, whether, whether all the hype was justified, but I'm willing to live with that uh, uncertainty. Um... Yeah, so I said here technically the correct. So you're technically engraving rather than burning an M-disc. So here's the thing about M-discs. So uh, they can be read by regular optical drives, which you, if you think about it, makes sense, right? That the burners or the engravers need to be M-disc certified, but you don't need M-disc certified readers, right? Because the data, once the data gets put on the disc, it's just a regular optical disc can be read. But to get through that process of engraving, I think you need like a stronger laser. So you need to, if you want to get into archiving to MDisc, you need to look for uh, MDisc Blu-ray burners. Assuming you're using Blu-ray, I don't know why anyone would be using DVD in this day and age because you can just fit much more data on a Blu-ray. I was gonna say next slide, then I realized I am, I am the slide guy. I've been watching too many YouTube webinars. Um, so why, let's just roll back a second, right? Why is this something that is, is interesting in the first place? So there's a misconception. This is something you see people do. I've even seen so many YouTube videos where people are showing their backup archive and they're like, yeah, we're a video production company and have a look at how many hard drives we've filled up and they're just sitting in a box. Now, just because a lot of people do something doesn't mean it's, it's actually the right way of going about something. I'm trying to think of examples, but too many examples to list. So if you leave hard drives, right, like the hard drive here, they're not intended to be stored cold. Hard drives are supposed to live in computers, right? And the computer, almost all the operating systems nowadays has you know, error checking software. And if the hard drive is about to fail, it'll say, hey, your hard drive has bad sectors. And you know, oh crap, it's about to, you know, it's about to fail. I need to take a backup and get a new hard drive and move the data over, right? So there is that mechanism. When you have a hard drive sitting cold on a shelf, the way hard drives write data is freaking fascinating, right? It's actually using magnetization. And when your hard drive sit, let's just pretend this hard drive here is on the screen next to me is sitting on someone's shelf, it's actually going to be demagnetizing over time, right? The bits are gonna flip. So if you think about magnetism, North Pole, South Pole, those bits are gonna flip. And when the bits flip, it can range from the, the, the outcome of that can be 
uh, skipped frames in a video or frames with a bit of distortion or in the worst case uh, data that's totally unreasonable not only that but hard drives can catastrophically fail because of the fact that they have a physical mechanism so that's why hard drives however many people say oh yeah we're just storing our stuff in hard drive that's why it's not a good idea to actually store your stuff on cold storage in a hard drive ssd also suffers from this problem just not the mechanical failure aspect and tape does as well don't trust me trust mr backup curtis preston um, or, or trust other resources you can look online if you don't believe me tape lto linear tape optical does and can suffer from bit rot uh, so even though tape is yes what people think of for archival storage it's not actually guaranteed to uh, do its job right so this this mdisk stuff is actually very unique it's a technology where the manufacturers say claim yes i understand it's a claim this will not be susceptible to degradation of any of any kind we're going to write it in stone and that's going to last for 100 to 1000 years i have not seen any other optical storage if they're out there leave me a comment that actually claims this so as a small timer small time data person right i'm not backing up petabytes or even terabytes i'm backing up these youtube videos this youtube video will end up on an m disk that's what i'm backing up right at my level that's unique i'm like oh that's very exciting right so i can just back it up two copies three to one backup one in my home one in an offsite, and say hey my stuff is good don't need to connect it to power don't need to check it periodically it's good so that's unique um so yeah so basically that's the problem with so that that's why it is unique yeah now the cloud is a different a different beast or an nas network attack storage device which is kind of the same thing you have raid uh, random uh, array of independent disks and that's connected to power and i own a synology i do have one in my house and it's got all these programs checking for data rot right so yeah that's a, another approach a viable approach so you could do nas plus cloud but um, that, that's a it's, a it's a powered product right it needs to be connected to power and if you want to expand it you have to look into expanding it with expansion bays so it's a little bit more in a sense it's actually a good deal more complicated than the simple but effective means of backing up data by just repetitively burning disks and yeah backing up disk isn't fun no, no one enjoys it including me but um, yeah it's um, quite unique so then the question becomes well what about lto or tape isn't that isn't tape supposed to be what isn't there already something doing archival right so first point against that is lto is susceptible to bit rot or data rot according to curtis who i have a relationship with as a friend i was on his podcast he hosts the restored all podcast he's a backup and storage expert curtis just says yeah it does but it's much much less than hdd sdd now um, another problem really for home consumers is that tape's really expensive not the actual tape the actual medium is much cheaper on a per gigabyte or per terabyte basis but the drives are a lot more expensive you can get an m disk burner for like 100 bucks okay and again so this hasn't been uh the point i make here is that look m disk say 100 to 1000 years they've only been around since 2009 so i'm recording this video in 2022 so that's 13 years correct me if i'm wrong uh, so we can't even know for sure they last 100 years because they just haven't been invented for that that long yet so what we're left with is these accelerated aging tests done by the department of defense and others and that's the best surrogate we have today right we can teleport uh we can teleport 90 years into the future in a time machine because time travel is impossible to say oh yeah the m disk here we go we burned all these m disks we read them back in 100 years and the marketing was accurate no one can do that so there's no point to arguing about this uh, we just have to either trust them or not trust them and that's a personal decision i personally i'm on team m disk uh in this debate so why is tape much bigger than m disk well if you think about it optical storage has never really been suitable for the enterprise there's a few reasons for that the capacity in optical is just too small right these um, m discs get up to 100 gigs and writing to them as i mentioned is very slow although that's actually i think uh, a problem with lto as well just to be transparent i don't own an lto drive i i'm not an lto guy but i've been reading enough threads on data hoarder subreddit that i think i understand the pros and cons between these two technologies pretty well um as uh, barry said the m disc guy 
and this optical media in general is hamstrung by small capacity problem, right? Including the M disk. Uh, there are apparently in the work super super cutting edge developments of storing data on quartz and crystal. If that tech ever materializes, optic may have a, optical may have a renaissance. But for now, the capacity just is not there. Now, there's one more problem actually, uh, or there's one more advantage of LTO. LTO is a really established tech in enterprises for archival and uh, tech libraries are big things. And you can see the graphic I added here of these, they have these crazy robots that'll like jung, grab out a, a tape from a tape library, physically insane tech that exists in enterprises. Um, you can even have um, LTO drives that can allow you to use it as a file system. Uh, MDISCs are also worm media. They are right once read many times. You, you, it's a one go engraving process. You put your data on once. So for a business doing archival and that doesn't is you know has tons of petabytes of data to store and it's going to be powered on anyway. LTO LTO makes way more sense, but that's not this. MDISC is intended to serve a different purpose. So I don't think it's an either or situation. They're just different use cases. So what is, um, so basically for, for the kind of stuff I'm doing, this is, uh, this is brilliant, right? It's for, it's for folks like me really. Like, you, you know, I have, I have a video or I have photos or I have a few, what else would you want to put in archival? I don't know, um, books. You can put in books, you can put in animations, you can put in, you know, whatever type of data you create that you really care about, you can put it on an MDisk. It's going to be an archive. So, and, and the worm media, as I said. So this, you're, you're not putting onto MDisk stuff you're going to be changing like a book you're working on, right? That would absolutely make zero sense um, because every time you change it, you need to burn a new disk. So that would be pointless. So what it is, again, I think for a videography work, and that's, I suspect, why B&H actually sell the MDisk, this is perfect. If you're a videographer and you're, you know, you're routinely shooting 10, 20 gigs of um, stock library and you don't even need to go three to one backup. You just want to have it for retrieval, maybe for your clients, right? MDisk is brilliant. It's not that expensive to $2.50 a disc if you're making a living from video, especially, right? It, you know, and again, you have to think about the cost of your data storage. If data is important to you, then 250 per disc to, if for something that's supposed to last and last and you don't have to worry about it for me that is well worth paying so and this are pricier than uh, blu-rays and people cring, uh, people curb about this on reddit but um there is you have to in my opinion look at the flip side of the process it's free thereafter you have to buy the discs but then it doesn't cost anything really to store a disc it's just in my binder put that in your attic or wherever you space and for the offsite, likewise, put it in your attic, wherever you space. You don't need to pay AWS or Backblaze or anyone for storing the MDisk. And again, I don't know of any other, until I came across this project, I didn't know of anyone that claims to be impervious to bit or data rot. It's a very, very exciting thing. Moving on, um, I mean, we're getting near the end. I'm using, so here's what I'm doing. I'm personally using it to uh, archive these YouTube videos because I actually do really care about these videos. I know they're, I know my YouTube channel is in its early phase and I still regard these as my rookie video attempts, even though I've been at this for a few years. But yeah, I wanna preserve this data. I want it to be accessible, maybe for my kids, maybe for my grandkids. I don't want it to just be on YouTube, a third party SaaS provider and hope there isn't a random strike against the YouTube channel or I get hacked or some of my videos get deleted. So therefore I'm preserving my original data three, two, one in two places. Um, I'm actually go generating a decent amount of data in a small time for a lot of people, but you'd be surprised the amount of data. If, if let's say I put up one video per day, which at the moment I have been, I've been actually doing quite a lot of this video stuff. This video might come to 500 megs. So do that every day and add the numbers up and you're suddenly the data is accumulating, right? So here's what I personally do when I finish these videos, I put them on my NAS and then I wait for 25 gigs or 23 gigs because you don't get the full 25. And then I take on my MDisk burner and I burn two copies. One goes into my on-site library and the second I get, uh, now I'm bringing it in my suitcase to my in-laws. In future, I might have a backup buddy where like I post my disks, he posts his disks or she posts her disks there's different ways to do physical backup and you can actually have a bit of fun with it. You can have a backup buddy that you meet in a bar once a month and he brings his latest discs, you bring your latest discs and now you've each got a copy of your discs in a different geographic location. That's an offsite. It's just not the cloud. 
So this, believe it or not, is still done. In, in enterprise tech terms, this is an analogous to Iron Mountain. So you can actually do 321 backups with just with the M disk. That's actually what I'm doing at the moment. I have my original data, these YouTube videos. I have my originals sitting in my home office. Eventually these guys will be in a Pelican box for now they're in this binder. And in about three weeks from now, I'll also have them sitting in uh, somewhere in the US as my offsite. So uh, as possible, which to me is pretty damn cool. What are some other advantages of the MDisk uh, optical cold archival storage? Again, I'm gonna argue that it's just not that expensive, right? So if you're doing three to one backup, that means each 25 gigs is twice copied. So if you have, if it's 250 a disc, that's five bucks for your two copies for 25 gigs. And let's say like me, you go through it a month. So if you're spending $5 a month, but for lifetime protection, no cost thereafter to me, that's an absolutely worthwhile investment in data protection, especially if you're business, even if, it, even if you're not doing it for business, just for keeping memory safe. And that's at the high scale. Maybe you only burn one end of a year. Uh, so I think it's, it's uh, I don't, I, I think it's, exp yeah, they're more expensive than optical because it's a special tech and it costs money to make this engraving layer, I presume. It's green. I, I, as a newbie environmentalist, I'm currently working I've made a slight career transition recently. I've historically worked in tech and now I'm actually working in uh, for a sustainable sustainability, uh, an individual uh, involved in financial uh, sustainability. So I'm becoming more conscious of this stuff. And actually M discs, in my opinion, are a green cause, right? Think about how much, there's a figure about how much of the world's power consumption goes to data centers. Data centers have to have power fed into them. They need a lot of cooling. They need a lot of electricity. And some of that data does not need to be accessed. It's just there as a fail safe for archival, like my video backups, right? So all that power, all that data, if it were stored on MDisk or even LTO, but let's say MDisk, never have to check it again. There's potentially actually a huge power saving here. So I would argue that the MDisk is a green form of storage because it's just one, one time burn and then no electricity cost required to have it sitting on your shelf. Um, so yeah, green people buy M disks. How do you write to your M disks? So um, I've had no trouble using K3B on Ubuntu. There's also serv uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. services for uh, programs for Windows and Mac. Uh, you do need to make sure you have an M disk capable burner. So not anyone will do. Um, now M disk burning is a is slow. It's a it's a slow process, and I presume that's got to do with the engraving. I was burning them at one time, so. It, if I look a bit demented right now or a bit crazy, think about what I've been doing, guys. I literally burn these. There's 18 discs, one by one by one by one. So that was 18 hours. By the way, I was doing work as this was going on, but I spent yesterday as I was working, feeding discs in and out of my M disc burner. And then I did the whole thing again for my offsite. So it's a lot of work, but that was because I was doing five years of M disking previously. If you are uh, doing it once per month, it's gonna be much easier, right? That's the way to do it. At the end of each month, set yourself a Google Calendar appointment for the 31st, burn your month's data onto MDisk two times, one on site, post one off site, boom, you're done. So yeah, if you're doing five years retrospectively, it's a lot of work, but data protection, it's worth it, I would argue. Um, so yeah, uh, don't do it the way I did it, do it ongoing. Where can you get these things? So uh, not actually that hard. Now I live in fear. I live in fear right now that the MDisk is going to go out of business. I really hope it isn't. So that's my ulterior motive in these videos. I'm not, I don't have shares in MDisk. I'm just hoping they keep making these things because uh, I, I, I don't see a replacement for it. So this is how much they cost 65 bucks on Amazon for a 25 spindle and uh, burners are about hundred bucks. So not bad. And again, compared to LTO, this is a ton cheaper, right? LTO drives cost thousands of dollars. So yeah, you can get started with, if, if you watch this video and say, I love it, I'm in, I want to start burning MDisk. You can get going for about a hundred bucks. Uh, burner plus MDisk, you'll get these combo things on Amazon. By the way, they also exist, these duplicators. Um, so what these are useful for is, it's, these work offline, so you don't need a computer. So you can burn your one MDisk. And I haven't found double M disk drives that like they'll burn two at the same time. So you could try to use two external drives. 
or you can use these duplicator folks, duplicator yolks. And that, that means that what you do here is you burn your first M disk and then you just feed it into this machine and it will copy, it'll copy. These are all, these can work without a computer. Now look at the price tag, 250 bucks. It's actually cheaper to buy a second M disk burner and burn two copies at the same time. Uh, but this is more convenient, arguably, especially if you're doing like what I did for the last um, day or two and you're literally one by one by one, feeding, reading, copying, feeding, reading, copying. That's what he's doing, feeding my first copies, downloading them onto the computer about a 30 minute per disk, then burning them about an hour per disk, very, very slow. So this, something like this would really speed up the process. I can't find one with 220 volts power. If I did, I would probably buy one, I have to be honest. Um, why not, if you're taking this seriously? And these, these things, unfortunately, I reckon are gonna go off the market. So if you can get one, I personally would snap one up before they stop making them because eventually we're, we're realistically all on the path towards obsolescence. Here's some photos for you guys of MDisk madness in progress. Here's me using K3B on Ubuntu Linux to burn an MDisk. Uh, as I said, it's a slow process. I was getting 1.4 times speed and it you can see remaining time here 51 minutes nothing about this was fast but yeah i just you know get it running um and then just go and do other things um while your m discs are burning away here is what my couch looked like yesterday while i was in the process of copying m discs from my on-site to my off-site folders uh now here is a point to debate i posted a video on permanent marker on labeling your m discs and then a commenter on this youtube channel said don't label them because you could throw off the balance of the m discs and then because i thought i was being smart by not using a uh, permanent marker although these ones have these were like my first i'm just kind of trying everything at the moment then some people say permanent marker can seep down into the data and destroy it so then people say well use permanent markers <coughs> that are cd rated won't be a problem Everyone agrees that writing here where my mouse is, where there's no data stores, is safe. So what I would do is get a CD permanent marker and just write, you can see I'm using A003. So I would write here on this area, A003, and not if you're really worried and not do labeling. But I haven't had problems reading back ones I've labeled. Just with the label printer, uh, I haven't had problems writing to them with the label on them, so I'm not sure if it's really an issue. These are, we're probably getting into my new CA here. And then people also say, you know, don't store them in binders because you're gonna get a compression effect. I've worried a lot about this stuff and I'm at the point where I feel like these things I'm not personally worried about, some people are, you can make up your own mind about that. So yeah, as I said here, this is the way I'm doing it. I just got a folder from Amazon and I'm slotting in the disks and I'm labeling them and you'll see why in a second. Uh, but if you wanna do it as well as possible, dual cases I, are, are the, probably the safest way because each disc is physically isolated. And this is just my labeling system. You see the discs have a name like A001. So I'm just keeping a spreadsheet where I say, uh, you know, uh, at the top of my slideshow is cropped a bit, but whatever. Um, I'm keeping a, uh, so I just write down and this is just a placeholder. I'm gonna be a bit more descriptive saying my YouTube videos from June, my YouTube videos and that's A007. And then for my offsite, I'm labeling them A007 copy, right? I, I, I think that should be enough in terms of process. Ah, oh, we're at the end of the presentation. So I hope that was useful. I'm gonna be a bit brave and call this everything you need to know about MDiscs, given that that's probably slightly false advertising. There probably is more uh, you need to know. I'm gonna say everything everything you might want to know about the M disk because uh, there is undoubtedly more knowledge about these, although it's pretty obscure tech and um, there's not a ton on, even a lot of threads on Reddit that are interested, guessing, a lot of guesswork going on, when will these be supported, is it really blah, blah, blah. But this is about as much as I'm aware that there is kind of like known in the public domain. So if you're thinking about using these M disks for archival uh, storage, I do personally so far highly recommend them it's been actually in a weird way kind of therapeutic to go back to those optical days where you know the burner makes that lovely kind of startup sound like an airplane and all in all given that I was retrospectively backing up four years a video and that I've done it two times for a 3 one backup it yeah it took me about a day while I was working but it wasn't like that bad and again, if you do this once per month on an ongoing basis, 
it's going to be much easier so there you go guys that's that's it wow i'm just going to cut out under exactly under 30 minutes if i stop speaking in 10 seconds so thank you guys for watching this video if you want to get more videos from me about tech mdisks linux and all the other random topics i cover on this youtube channel please feel free to hit the subscribe button and thank you for watching